Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IES classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 9th April 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. Today's quote is motivational quote. So quote is, day by day what you do is who you become. Okay, so what you have to become, what you want to become in future that may it depends upon what you are doing day by day. Right, so if you want to become a successful IAS officer and to clear this UPSC, you have to work hard these days and day by day you have to improve your knowledge. Right, so now let us try to see first topic it is regarding closing the gaps in criminal justice. So here this article which is mainly talking about what are the guidelines of Supreme Court regarding this criminal justice. So this topic is important from your GS paper to under your polity. So now let us try to understand this topic in a very great detail. Actually this topic it is a very dry topic. So now let us try to understand some provisions of uh, recommendations or guidelines which is mainly given by Supreme Court. To, um, to improve this criminal justice, mainly to decrease the deficiencies in our criminal justice. So, we are talking about why it is in news. So, last year Supreme Court of India, that is a top court or apex court of country. So, while hearing a criminal appeal, so it mainly came up with this sumoto cognizance and it is mainly dealing with deficiencies and as well as some inadequacies during this uh, criminal trials. So during this criminal trials, what are the deficiencies are there, what are the inadequacies are there. So these are mainly dealt, okay, during a criminal appeal to Supreme Court. And in that context, Supreme Court came up with issuing of certain guidelines to decrease these deficiencies and to overcome these inadequacies which are mainly present in this criminal trials. So the case was criminal trials versus the state of Andhra Pradesh 2021. So in this case, Supreme Court came up with this some guidelines regarding inadequacies and deficiencies in criminal trials, right? So these directions, okay, so these directions which are mainly including uh, like site plan. So how should go for site plan and inquest report that is investigation report and also talked about body sketches. So body sketches mainly include some post-mortem reports. Okay, and even it mainly talked about photographs and videographs of photo post mortem in some cases, and it was also talk talking about the separation of prosecution from investigation. <coughs> so these are some important areas, like for example, site plan, investigation report, inquest means nothing but investigation, investigation report, body sketches, photographs and videographs of post mortem in certain cases. And it also says that separation of prosecution from the investigation. So apart from that, so what are the guidelines are given by Supreme Court? So high courts and as well as state governments, they mainly ask it to notify these draft rules of criminal procedure or criminal practice 2021. So almost all the states and the high courts, they agreed upon these guidelines. But there are many, in many a case, we can see there will be like a small or minor vari variation that is mainly seen, okay. So, in the most of the cases, high courts and state governments, they came up with agreeing of these guidelines which is given by Supreme Court. So, those guidelines are rules of criminal practice 2021. So, now let us try to see some important recommendations of the guidelines. So, first one is preparing of site sketch. So site sketch means nothing but if you see this is the area where the crime happened and we find a dead body here. So what is the thing that should be done by this police after getting information regarding the presence of a so and so dead body which is in present in the so and so place. So if you are following some channels or if you are seeing or watching some uh, crime related movies and especially CID, CID is there in us. Hindi and as well as in our Telugu language also. So if you are following that CID in either Hindi or Telugu then you will be knowing about what will be the process of this site sketch and how they are going for investigation. So what are the details that they will be getting during this post-mortem. So how they will be coming towards a conclusion. So how they are going for DNA test 
and how they are going for tracing of fingerprints like that so those things that will be very clear if you are watching this type of uh, crime related movies or CID okay so I will suggest uh, actually I was very very interested re in watching this CID actually so it is one it is of one of my favorite hobby actually so if we are talking about this CRPC that is criminal procedure code so here uh, already we know that we will be having this IPC we will be having this CRPC so according to this criminal procedure code which mainly mandates that officer in charge of a police station so after receiving information about any offense or any crime okay they need to go to the spot of the crime and at that spot they need to go for investigation of the facts and they need to go for creating of a circumstances of the cases so in general practice here what happens so after reaching the point or after reaching the spot or after reaching the so and so area so we need to go for preparing of site sketch okay so in this site sketch it need to have some details of crime scene and they need to collect some evidences for example if there is any murder which is done by any uh, by gunshot means they will be getting some uh, some uh, some important thing like the gunpowder or you have to find out which bullet that is how much mm that is right and which angle in which angle the shot happened so uh, for example if there is any murder which is mainly done by knife means they have to collect the knife where it is present like that okay so in this way here whenever we are reaching that crime spot so we will be getting some evidences okay so we need to go for collecting of evidences so if you are taking that uh, knife means if you are collecting that knife means on that knife there is high chance of getting fingerprints so if at all that uh, that person who is a criminal who is wearing the gloves means we can't get the fingerprints but unless and until if he is not wearing the gloves means we can also get some fingerprints on that right so here we need to go for collecting of evidence at that site so as per the guidelines it mainly says that site sketch which mainly prepared by investigating officer shall be followed by scale site plan okay so first here investigation officer come uh, come up with this uh, site sketch and after that site plan should be prepared okay scaled site plan should be prepared by police draft man okay so police draft man is also very much necessary according to these guidelines and these guidelines also mandates that medical legal certificate okay medical legal certificate and as well as post mortem report should be in a in a printed format okay so in this uh, in this medical legal certificate and as well as post mortem report also we need the printed format of human body okay and wherever the injuries are there that images should be also present and those should be also indicated in the sketch so if we are talking about test veracity here so the purpose of preparing this investigation report it is to ascertain whether a person has died under suspicious circumstances or died an unnatural death for sometimes what happen there will be the poisoning cases will be there and in some uh, cases what happen so some criminals they will be importing some uh, dangerous animals like uh, some snake venom okay some dangerous animals which are not native to that country and they will be using that animals to attack this humans especially to have some committing of crime and even some cases if there are close persons who will be having some girls on any other person means they will be knowing about uh, that person who is allergy with so in that case they will be also using some allergic materials to cause death so in this way here we need to know whether this death which happened because of suspicious circumstances or because of unnatural death or natural death like that so we need to come up with a conclusion so this evidence if the evidence and as well as material which is collected during investigation so this will be very much helpful to come up with the cause of death here okay and later on we can come up with the registration of the case and we need to go for regular investigation should be done okay so similarly if you are talking about this post mortem report so post mortem report will be acting as a document by itself it is not a piece of substantive evidence so if you are talking about for better scrutiny here 
So even National Human Rights Commission, that is NHRC in India, also came up with some similar guidelines in cases of death in police custody. So in police custody, also deaths will be happen because of sometimes torture. So sometimes because of some, if if at all any illness which is present in that person, like heart failure, like that. So during this investigation process, what happened? There will be some. Uh, because of some anxiety because of uh, uh, because of tachycardia or bradycardia that is irregular heartbeats that will be also leads to this custodial deaths or police custody deaths right so here in this supreme court also had directed in if at all in case of death of a person in a police action or death in police custody then the magistrate or this investigation officer they shall inform this hospital to arrange a photography and videography for conducting of post mortem examination of this deceased so whenever any person who who mainly dead in this police custody means so whenever po uh, post mortem is happening means at that time so this police officer that is investigating officer or the magistrate they need to arrange for the photography and as well as videography during this post mortem of that deceased person and the similar guidelines which mainly issued by this national human rights commission so it was way back in 1995 and here nhrc which is revising these guidelines time to time right so supreme court in this famous case that is people union for civil liberties versus state of maharashtra also issued similar guidelines for death in the exchange of fire with the police and if you're talking about this draft code which now which now which mainly provides that investigating officers shall see such photographs and as well as videographs and they have to preserve the original okay the, the original thing and they can obtain the certificate under section 65b of indian evidence act so under this indian evidence act so this draft code says that investigating officer they shall keep okay they shall seize this photographs and as well as videographs okay under this section 65b of indian evidence act and the purpose of these guidelines it is mainly to ensure that there should be uniformity that should be present in the procedure in the cases or in the cases which are mainly dealing with the cases of death in police action or custody here so therefore we need to go for we need to go for this uh, we need to there will be like appropriate for this uh, police forces across the states and that will be helpful for speeding up of implementation of this uh, scheme and we can go for own cadre photographers so that expertise is maintained in the police station level okay to mainly to record this case of this police custody deaths okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding russia suspended from this human rights council unhrc united nations human rights council so in yesterday's lecture we studied some introduction regarding this topic and now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so this topic is important regarding your GS paper to under international nations. So now let us try to talk about this topic. So if you see here, what is the context? So already you know that Russia's membership in this United Nations Human Rights Council has been suspended. Okay, so because of the suspension of this Russia from this United Nations Human Rights Commission. So now it is one of the global spotlight. So why this Russia which is mainly suspended? because of civilian killings in ukraine so because of this ongoing russia ukraine crisis so that led to killing of civilians in this ukraine so because of this here russia which mainly suspended from this united nations human rights council so here this resolution which is mainly sponsored by us okay us sponsored resolution in this united nations general assembly and actually this resolution which mainly approved by 93 countries and 24 countries are against this resolution and about 58 uh, countries they abstain from this resolution so india is also one of the country which mainly abstain from this voting so we're talking about details regarding the civilian killing so according to the office of high commissioner of uh, human rights they mainly said that about 1611 civilians have been killed and 2227 civilians they have been injured in this russia ukraine war so when this war has begun so till from that time onwards it is now 40 more than 40 days so in this 40 days about 1611 civilians they were killed and about 2227 civilians they were injured in this ukraine so what is india's stand india mainly abstained from this resolution right so what are the reasons india believes that 
India believes that decision should be taken by respecting due process as all democratic polity and structures they respect the same and this also applies to international organizations so in these international organizations also they need to respect the due process right and india which mainly emphasizing on the due course is significant and there was unease apparently among a large section of the member states to expel russia without waiting for the outcome of a probe into the violations and apart from that it also said that if india has chosen any side so it is a side of peace and it is for an immediate end to violence so whatever the stand that we want here we want to go for peace and we want to end the violence and experts feel that the vote at this united nation general assembly was difficult for india as it subverts and short circuits the whole human rights council led process so this is about the stand of india so now let us try to say next topic it is regarding precaution job okay precaution job so this article is very important because now we are seeing there is a new variant that is xe variant of this covid 19 which is mainly circulating fast and actually the first case which which already we found but our union health minister denied this and now the first case of this uh, xe variant that is mainly found in gujarat so the this is the article in this today's newspaper itself so here there is again fear of increasing of transmission of this covid 19 so here government came up with this precaution job now so this article is important regarding gs paper to under health so if you are talking about context it mainly says that union health ministry announced that the precautionary or the third dose of covid 19 vaccine that would be made available for this 18 plus population at private vaccination centers at private vaccination centers we can get this eight, uh, we can get this third dose of this covid 19 or we can say it is a precautionary dose so it would be the same as that of previous doses so if you have got this covid shield then you will be getting this third vaccine covid shield and if you got if you had this co vaccine means you will be getting this co vaccine so if we talking about details it mainly says that all those who have completed 9 months after the second dose would be eligible so who will be eligible here so after taking two doses of this vaccine and after 9 months okay so it has been 9 months after taking this covid 19 means you are eligible to take this third dose of this covid 19 vaccine so union home uh, union health minister he mainly termed this precautionary jab as extra layer of safety So here in this context, I want to give you a homework. So let me know what is difference between booster dose and as well as precautionary dose. So this will be very important from your UPSC prelims point of view. Now let us try to say next topic is regarding RBI holds benchmark interest rates. So here, if you are talking about RBI, will be having this monetary policy. So in this monetary policy, we will be having two times normally. So we will be having accommodative. and we will be having constrictive accommodative or expansionary monetary policy or constrictive or tightening of this monetary policy so accommodative means what happen interest rates will be low such that they are mainly focusing on increasing of money supply in market but if you are talking about this constrictive or tightening of monetary policy here there will be high interest rates so because of this high interest rate that is mainly focusing to decrease money supply in market so this is difference between this accommodative and as well as constrictive monetary policy okay so this is a brief idea that you have to know so we are going to talk about this accommodative monetary policy so this article is important from your gs paper 3 under your economy and this topic is important from your both mains and as well as your prelims so if you are talking about context it mainly says that our central bank of india that is rbi which mainly said that benchmark interest rates and they said that they are going for this accommodative stance again so they are mainly focusing on this accommodative monetary policy and they want to increase this money supply in market but there is one issue here is inflation inflation is already very much high in our country so even though inflation which is very much high we are mainly going to have this accommodative monetary policy now So we're talking about some details. It mainly says that RBI also raised the forecast of inflation 
Inflation in this financial year 2023 to be 5.7 percentage, but at present February projection which mainly said that it is 4.5. So even though we are saying that there might be increasing of inflation, so we are mainly going to increase the money supply in the market. So this is this RBI idea. So central bank also lowered its growth estimate from 7.8 to 7.2 percentage. So even though there might be increasing of inflation, even though there might be decreasing of our economic growth, the RBI decided to come up with accommodative monetary policy. So what is this accommodative monetary policy? That means here there will be decreasing of interest rates. So whenever there is decreasing of interest rates, for example, repo rate, reverse repo rate, uh, SLR, okay, like that. So here these are some important interest rates, okay, like repo rate, reverse repo rate, SLR, okay. So what happened whenever there is decreasing of this interest rates, there will be increasing of money supply in the market, right? So it is mainly focusing to boost our economic growth. So this is about this accommodative policy. And now let's try to see next topic. It is regarding fortified rice via this public dustbin system. So title says that government not to supply fortified rice via PDS. So this article is important regarding your GS paper to under governance. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So here fortification of rice will be an important topic from your mains. So if you are talking about context, it mainly says that government approved the distribution of this fortified rice across uh, the government schemes such as PDS, public distribution system and also providing some nutritional services for the school children and as well as Anganwadi beneficiaries. So here we can talk about PM portion as well as midday meals program, right. So here why we need to supply this fortified rice via this PDS system. So actually what happened this PDS system which is mainly providing subsidized food grains for the below poverty line people. So actually in these people there is a one important problem that is malnutrition is very much high. So to counter that malnutrition so whatever the food grains that are provided by the government if they are adding some micronutrients like iodine, iron etc. So this will be very helpful for improving the nutrition of these people right. So here because of this government which mainly decided to provide this food, fortified food grains under this public distribution system and as well as a nutritional services programs for school children and as well as Anganwadi beneficiaries. So if we are talking about details it mainly says that the entire cost of this scheme is Rs 2700 crore and it will be mainly borne by the center. So actually they said that they will be going to implement or full implementation will be done by 2024 June. Okay, by 2024 June there will be the full implementation of this scheme. So the initiative will be implemented in the three phases. Actually the first phase Anganwadi centers under this integrated child development services and this PM portion. Okay, PM portion will be covered under this first phase. So in, under this first phase the implementation should be done by March 2022 but it, ha it is not implemented till now okay. So what happened it is still under implementation under this phase one that is under this ICDS and as well as this PM portion. And the second phase will cover targeted public distribution system and even other welfare schemes. So in all 20, 291 okay in all 291 aspirational districts and as well as uh, and as well as uh, some districts which are mainly having some high burden of stunting. So they will be covered by March 2020 and we have to let's wait and see whether it will be done or not. And the third phase, in the third phase remaining districts of the country they will be covered by March 2024 and we have to still wait and see whether it will be completed by this 2024 or not. So now let us try to talk about some details regarding this scheme. So this scheme is mainly focusing to address some issues like anemia and micronutrient deficiencies in the country and this, uh, this scheme which is mainly approved by the government of India for a period of 3 years in 2019 to 2020. And under this scheme even this FCA Food Corporation of India they are asked to come up with comprehensive plan for procurement and as well as distribution of this fortified rice in all districts of the countries. Okay, under this ICDS that is uh, Integrated Child Development Scheme and as well as Midday Meal Scheme. And this Midday Meal Scheme it is now known as this PM portion, right? And we are mainly focusing on this aspirational districts actually. And now let's try to talk about some facts on this fortification. 
so what is the meaning of this fortification it is nothing but we are adding some key vitamins key vitamins and minerals we are adding key vitamins and minerals per se i can talk about iron iodine zinc vitamin a and d so these are some key vitamins and minerals that are mainly added okay to the food like uh, for example rice milk salt so if you are talking about salt we will be getting iodized salt right so these nutritions will be very much uh, helpful for improving of uh, nutritional status so we are talking about this fortification of rice according to food ministry so fortification of rice which is like a cost effective process and it is a it is one of the important complementary strategy to increase vitamin and as well as mineral content in diets to increase this vitamin and mineral content in the diet which is very very helpful and according to this fssai norms 1 kg of this fortified rice which mainly contains iron so iron will be from 28 to 42.5 mg and we can also see there will be the folic acid folic acid will be 75 to 125 micrograms mu g and the vitamin b it is between 0.75 to 1.25 microgram so these are the some values of vitamins and as well as minerals that we are mainly going to add in this rice so in addition in addition to this rice even there will be the fortification of uh, some micronutrients that can be seen like zinc vitamin e vitamin b1 vitamin b2 vitamin b3 and vitamin b6 so these will be also added so this is about this topic and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding india studying us sanctions on elrosa so actually here yeah, this elrosa it is one of the important mining of diamonds in russia so in yesterday's lecture we studied that here us which is mainly going for increasing of sanctions on russia right so this article is important from your gs paper to under international relations so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that here us united states which mainly came up with a decision to impose stricter sanctions on russia okay so it is mainly going for imposition of sanctions on this elrosa of russia here so this elrosa is a one of the important major player in india's gems and as well as jewelry industry so this is a thing which is mainly evaluating by india now so if we're talking about details it mainly says that so whenever there is imposing of sanctions on this elrosa so this elrosa it is a one of the diamond mining company okay so actually whenever there is imposing of the sanctions means what happened that will be mainly blocking this exports of that of that so and so mining here so that will be the one of the important challenge for india because diamond has been one of the major component of india russia trade in recent years right so because of this it will be affecting jewelry sector in india so if you see this image so this this image it is alrosa mines of diamonds so if you are talking about this image so this image which mainly talking about in which areas we are going for this uh, extraction of these diamonds so in canada we can get diamonds and brazil and here in the guyana and sierra leone and congo tanzania angola namibia south africa lesotho botswana zimbabwe these are the some important areas we can get diamonds here russia and as well as in australia so here in these areas we can get good amount of diamonds and we can import from this so actually we are mainly importing this diamonds from this alrosa from russia so now because imposing of the sanctions so that will be mainly affecting this uh, trade between russia and india regarding this diamonds right and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding india test missile system successfully so this article which is mainly talking about solid fuel ducted ramjet booster okay so this topic is important from your gs paper 3 under science and technology so this topic is very important from your prelims so if you are talking about context it mainly says that so india successfully flight tested solid fuel ducted ramjet booster okay solid fuel ducted ramjet booster it is a missile system at the integrated test range in chandipur of this odisha coast so here if you are talking about context it mainly says that india successfully flight tested solid fuel ducted ramjet booster it is a missile system okay so if we are talking about some details it mainly says that so this system which is mainly enables missile to intercept aerial threats at supersonic speeds and the test which demonstrated reliable functioning of all components okay 
so in this test we understand that it can intercept these aerial threats which are mainly moving with sub, uh, with the supersonic speed that means the speed which is more than compared to the speed of sound right and all components are working well so this is the image of that test okay so we are talking about some facts regarding this solid fuel ducted ramjet so it is a missile propulsion technology and this technology which mainly jointly developed by india and russia and this will be helping both surface to air missiles and air to air missile system and it will be helpful for the performing better and even to enhance their strike range and it will be it will be leading to making them more lethal okay so actually india can have the fastest long range missiles in two categories for example full fledged and as well as multi layered uh, multi layered aerial protection okay that will be also provided so this is about this topic and now let us try to see questions which is given yesterday so first question is regarding early sangam tamil poems so so they are mainly speaking about five eco zones so in this context mullai refers to pasture land with low hills and thin forest mullai means nothing but pasture land with low hills and thin forest so those five eco zones are kurinji means nothing but hills and forest and mullai it is a pasture land with low hills and thin forest and marutam means fertile agriculture plains and nethal means sea coast and palai means arid zones so these are the five eco zones which are mainly used in this Sam sangam tamil poems and next question is regarding megalithic burials so first one is dead were buried with distinctive post called as black and red were yes and burials sometimes yielded tools and weapons of iron yes skeleton of horses and horse equipment they are found in this megalithic burials yes so these three statements are correct so correct option will be four all the above and these are the today's questions so the first one here it is gupta administration second one is regarding neolithic culture of kashmir valley so try to read the statements and try to give me the correct options for these questions in the comment box and now let us try to see newspaper pdf so before seeing this newspaper pdf i want to make a small announcement so we are going to launch this mains answer writing practice course from this monday so if you want to join this course so please contact us on this number 8074765513 so just one day is left and and if you want to make registrations you can call me on this number for registrations and the details of this course is given in description box you can download the time table or time schedule okay and apart from that we are ready to launch this pen drive courses for entire foundational course of 2023 so this will be very very useful right and here we are discussing each and every topic in your syllabus with the conceptual clarity so because you have to follow the trends of upsc upsc it is not asking facts based questions that used to ask earlier now it asking it started asking analysis based questions to answer those questions conceptual clarity is very much required right so these are the courses so if you have any doubts you can call on this number and this is also whatsapp number you can message on this number also so now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our today's hindu date here is april 9th 2022 and this is delhi edition so i discuss this first topic regarding this precaution job and there is one article regarding home ministry seeks six more months to frame this caa rules so this article says that ministry of home affairs which mainly sought another six months to frame rules of this citizenship amendment act of 2019 okay so actually so this is mainly talking about providing of citizenship for six non muslim communities from pakistan bangladesh and as well as afghanistan so you have to refer some facts regarding the citizenship amendment act of 2019 and i discussed about this benchmark interest rates of rbi and now this article says that supreme court holds new restrictions on receiving foreign funds so here you need to know about this fcr a foreign contribution regulation act so supreme court upheld the amendments in this introducing of restrictions in this foreign contribution regulation act okay and here you need to know some facts regarding this fcr and what are the recent amendments that is very important and if you move further leave the city page and if you come to the states page it didn't find any article which is important but here you can see a small article that is bodo land state demand revived 
So what happened now? A new students union which has revived uh, this borderland statehood demand. So actually we came up with this borderland peace accord we signed in 2020 and again now there are some protests that are mainly going on for this statehood for this borderland. So you have to see where this is borderland is present and you have to see what is the issue regarding this borderland statehood. And in this editorial page I discussed this article and I also discussed this Russia issue. And if you move further, so there are articles regarding 365 new procedures to come under this ABPMJAY. So here National Health Authority which mainly launched a new version of this health benefit package 2022. So under this package, under this Ashman Bharat Pradhan Mandir Jain Arogya Yojana, they mainly adding 365 new procedures. So here you need to focus on what is this Pradhan Mandri. Jan Arogya Yojana, we discussed this topic number of times and I discussed regarding this fortified rice. I discussed about this Alrosa. And if you move forward, you are here you can see Gujarat reports its first case of this XC variant. So already we discussed about this what is this XC variant? It is a recombinant variant, it is a combination of Omicron plus Delta variant. And there is a high transmission rate for this variant. So we are because of this, we are coming up with this precautionary jabs as well. And this article says that Jal Jeevan mission to supply water to rural areas by 2024. Okay, so already we discussed this Jal Jeevan mission number of times. So under this Jal Jeevan mission, they are mainly focusing for providing of uh, water supply through functional household taps and the target here is 2024. Okay, and this Jal Jeevan mission which is mainly focusing on supply of safe and adequate drinking water through tap connection to all households in the rural areas and the target here is 2024. So here under this target they are going to supply about 55 liters of water per person per day okay, to every household in the villages. And next topic is regarding this Navy crew complete training on MH60R helicopter. So this is important from your defense. And if you say this business page, you can see article regarding this RBI which is mainly focusing on inflation, lifts estimates. So you can talk about what is this inflation, what are the types of inflation. Because in 2021, there were three questions which appeared in our uh, economy session from your prelims from this inflation. So this inflation will be an important topic. So these are some important topics that appear in this today's Hindu newspaper. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please subscribe to our thoughts, IS Academy. And don't forget to like, share and comment my videos. So if you have any queries, please call on this number 8074765513. So please try to enroll these courses which are absolutely very, very beneficial. So by this I am concluding. Thank you so much.